Hey friends, welcome back to my channel. Today we are making the most delicious banana berry muffins, cleaning out my upstairs hallway, making my very own sourdough starter, and trying out my new massaging neck pillow. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Amanda and this is my channel, Amanda's Daily Home, where I love to share videos about all things house and home and give you all of the cleaning and homemaking motivation you need. And if you love those types of videos, hit that subscribe button. And if you're returning, I'm so happy you're back. Let's get into today's video. So as a YouTuber, I do a lot of editing and this travel neck massage pillow has been an absolute lifesaver for me, you guys. I wanna take a moment to thank Real Relax for sponsoring today's video. Their travel neck pillow with the massage is absolutely perfect for anybody who does a lot of traveling. You could take this pillow with you virtually anywhere. And also for somebody like me who is always hunched over at the computer, doing office work, editing my videos, it's even good for the car. If you have long car rides, you have this pillow just to support your neck and give you that nice little massage. It also has a heat mode so that you can have the heat on your neck as well as the massaging. So if you get a stiff neck, that is absolutely amazing for your neck. It just feels so good. At this point, I was doing editing for quite a while, so I was so happy to have this just kind of like getting all of the kinks out of my neck. It just feels like a really good deep tissue massage. The amazing features of this pillow is the built-in heating function. It heats up to 113 Fahrenheit, which is a nice and steady heat that you're getting right onto your neck. It improves your blood circulation. It penetrates deep into the tissue, relieving that neck and shoulder pain. The memory foam in the pillow uses 100% pure memory foam. And within five seconds, it's got that rebound technology for comfort and durability. It relieves that fatigue and it just achieves complete relaxation for you. You can see the shiatsu balls that are at the back of this neck pillow. It just rotates and it just digs right in nice and gently but very deeply into your neck. The neck support pillow adopts a U-shaped ergonomic curve design. It perfectly fits the curve of your spine. It provides 360 degree surrounding head and neck support to prevent your head from tilting forward. It relieves that neck pain during travel and just makes traveling so much more comfortable. This is absolutely an airplane travel essential. It can relieve your neck pain during sedentary travel. And right here is where you have the option to have the heat on or heat off. And the other thing that it can do when you press the M button, that's the mode, there's two modes. One goes a, at a faster speed and the other one goes at a much slower speed. So you can choose if you want it more intense or just nice and gentle. As you can see here, I'm editing my video and I'm just like, relaxing, having my neck massaged while I'm doing my work. It also comes with these two straps. So it's really easy just to strap, like you just like throw it over your shoulder. So if you're running through the airport with your luggage or whatnot, you don't have to worry about losing it. And it can also be used for eight days with 30 minutes of use per day when it's fully charged. It is rechargeable, so you can use it for those eight days for half an hour at a time, and then just go ahead and recharge it again. It also has a 10 minute automatic shutdown, so you avoid overuse. So if you guys are interested in the neck pillow, go ahead and head on down to my description box. I will have the link there for you. All right, let's head into the kitchen. Today I am making spinach banana berry muffins. I haven't made these in a long time, but they are so super good. And you guys, the color on these muffins is so vibrant and so beautiful. I love making these. And a lot of it has to do with the fact that I can stuff a whole lot of spinach in this recipe and the kids don't even know it. I like to blend up all of the liquid ingredients and the bananas in the blender. It just makes it so much easier to get all of the spinach just blended right in here. So I do the bananas, vanilla, some sugar. I'm also adding some melted butter here. 
I'm just adding a couple of fistful of spinach into the blender here. I just found a recipe for banana muffins on just anywhere on Google. I can't even remember which uh, recipe I use, but I always just modify it the way I want it to. So instead of just following the recipe, I just went ahead and added a bunch of spinach into there. And then that's the only thing I added at that time. So basically when you're doing the whole like banana and wet ingredient stage, that's when I added the spinach and the spinach just breaks right down. It looks like a lot of spinach, but once you start blending it, it is really not that much. So I'm adding the liquid to the dry ingredients. Then we're gonna fold this all together, mix it into the bowl. And then once that is done, then we can go ahead and add any kinds of like berries or chocolate chips. So like I said, since we're not following a recipe here, if you have any kind of tweaking you wanna do to like a basic banana uh, muffin recipe, now's the time where you would add some berries, um, basically anything you want. You can do blueberries, raspberries, strawberries, and then go ahead, drop it into a muffin tin. This one is just like a silicone muffin baking pan. I was using um, strawberries that were really like wet. So I went ahead and um, just mix it in the bowl. But sometimes if you want to drain it before so it doesn't add too much liquid into your batter, that is a good idea because otherwise it will change the consistency of your muffin. Now I'm just popping it in the oven and I am just going to bake it just as the directions said in the recipe and they turned out perfect. So there was like no trouble at all with modifying it. I love the vibrant green color. It is just so fun for the kids. I made this, I started making this recipe when they were like just really little, like two, three, four years old. And I would just call these the Hulk muffins and they would absolutely love it because they were just so colorful. All right guys, now that those muffins are done and out of the way, I'm starting something new and kind of challenging. Um, I'm trying to make my own sourdough starter. I've been seeing this all over on social media for, it's been months now and I've just never really had the time to do it, but now I'm intrigued. I've seen it so many times and I'm like, okay, I just want to try to make my own sourdough. So I went ahead made this sourdough starter. I put it in this jar, which was a terrible idea because you want something that's going to be clear so you can actually see what's going on in the jar. And this jar on the inside had like a whole bunch of little ridges and stuff like that. So it was hard to get everything incorporated and mixed. So this was just a bad idea. I just needed to get like a um, big liquid measuring cup or a big jar. So I did end up transferring this sourdough starter out of this jar into something more practical. So the sourdough starter is basically just one part whole wheat flour, one part water. So they do say that you should measure out your ingredients, but I followed a recipe from, I think it was Whispering Willows Farm. I believe that was the name of the um, YouTube channel where she shares how to make a sourdough starter and she just used a measuring cup. I will tell you, I ended up bailing out on that method and I went to weighing it. I'll show you a quick update on the sourdough starter in just a second. But for now, I'm just unpacking quickly my Just For Meats order. I got this um, for the first time. I got the June box and it just came with a whole bunch of different meats, which is really handy for us. I just threw it in the fridge. There's a bunch of different recipes you can make with it and whatnot. And a lot of times that making a meal is just like, if you have a really good meat as your main, you can just add a couple of sides, like a baked potato and a salad and you have a really nice meal. So this is 
great for the kids for lunches. It's all vacuum packed and it's got a marinade. These are all pre-cooked, but they do give you an extra sauce because when you reheat it in the pan, you wanna make sure it doesn't dry out. So it's really nice that they give you that extra sauce to make sure everything stays nice and moist. But yeah, I just keep these in the fridge for quick lunches. I will leave it linked down below in the description box for you guys. I also have a discount code for you. All right, so this was the sourdough starter on day two. You can see I switched my container. I did end up putting the discard in another jar. That way I could have another one going. I just felt really wasteful throwing it away. But I just said, okay, well, I'll try to keep going with like two jars just in case I need to tweak anything. But you can see from this clip that basically you discard half of the starter add one cup of water and one cup of flour. I will tell you that this method, it didn't really work good for me. I, I already mentioned this. I ended up having to weigh the ingredients and it is working much better. So I will keep you updated on the progress of my starter. All those little moments, the best you did catch me looking over the shoulder. All right, now heading up to the upstairs hallway, this space I have been dying to declutter and get rid of all this stuff for such a while. It's been sitting here for a few weeks. It's just been so hard to find the time to literally go through everything. There are some bins with like, there's clothes, there's stuff from the kids' rooms, from the other house, and oh my, like I don't even know. There's just all sorts of junk that we need to go through. So. What I did was I took this all downstairs to the front entrance area and I'm telling the kids to go through it, take out what they want. Nothing comes out of the pile unless it has a home because I don't want it just sitting around the house. It needs to have a spot in the house. So it's going to the front entrance. They're going to start going through it and we're going to organize everything. The rest of the stuff that they don't take out and put away is going to get donated. I don't even know how many trips up and down the stairs that I had made trying to get rid of this stuff, but there was just so much and so many bins and baskets of stuff. So like I said, that all went downstairs. Um, we had a, like a lot of hangers in there. There was even some clothes that I already had organized for donation. Uh, my sister also has boys, so I give a lot of my stuff to her. So that's nice that I can put our things into good use. All right, guys, time to vacuum up all of the baseboards, all in the railings. I'm going to get that all cleaned up, make sure there's no dust, and just make sure the floors are all nice and clean and no crumbs, no little rocks and stuff from the kids running in and out from the outside. As you can see, we still need lighting in our staircase there. We got to get a couple of wall sconces. Um, 
I actually just ordered a bunch of new lights for the exterior. All of our lighting is finally almost done. I've just got a few more to do and the staircase is one of the spots. Otherwise, I've got a couple of boxes to pick up at the post office. So we've got the exterior lights, which includes a couple of fans. So I'm really excited to show you what we did for the exterior. But then once that's done, then I'll get those sconces and then I need something for my closet too. And then a couple of pendant lights, one in the kitchen and one in the powder room. So I think that's all that's left. I also do want to upgrade the kids bathroom light. I really don't like that one. It was on sale at the time and we just needed to get some stuff like done so we could pass inspection. But I just hadn't really picked anything. We were at Home Depot and it was a great price. So we threw that in the bathroom. So you guys can also see there's a couple of transition pieces we still need to put in like where the bathroom tile is connecting to the hardwood in the hallway we need a piece there and then you can see our staircase is not finished yet this is super annoying to me I hate it it sounds hollow and echoey when you walk on it we have most of the materials to finish it we just need to order I think it's the oh the nosings for the stairs but otherwise we have the hardwood to finish it we just need to get it done so it's really annoying to me but you know it happens when we move into a house when it's not totally done and then Jeff is super busy with work coaching kids with hockey and there's like literally no time for our stuff and I think I mentioned this before in one of our other videos, but we always swore we would never move into an unfinished house again because we did that with our first house and it took a few years to get everything done. But here we are. <laughs> We're in the same situation again, but there's really not too much we can do at this point except for tackle things at one thing at a time. We did pick up the paint for the front door, so hopefully that's one thing that can get done in the next few days and I can show you guys that update. And then I also want to get the trim put in the front entrance area. There's just so many things I want to do. I want to get the stairs finished. I want to get the steam shower tiled. Um, there, like there's just all sorts of little random things. And then the machine is supposed to come this week to spread out the dirt in our yard. So all those things are needing to be done, but it's just moving really slowly. <laughs> So all of that stuff at the front area there is going to be left for the kids to go through today. So I won't be showing that in this video, but I'm just going to skip over to the kitchen because the kids started making a concoction that they saw online. I think it was on like I don't know if it was on TikTok or Instagram, but it was a awesome summer snack. So I will show you what they made. So what you do is you scoop out all of the flesh of the watermelon on the inside. What I did with, with that was I blended it up in a blender and then I poured it into the Ninja Creamy container. I just put some lime juice and honey and some salt in there. That's going in the freezer and then you can just blend that up and it's a refreshing summer treat. But what the kids wanted to make here was kind of like a jello mold thing so they put jello into the watermelon and filled it with berries but since the kids did it on their own they didn't really let it sit for long enough and i warned them that it, the jello didn't look like it was set so as soon as i opened it it kind of started spilling out they ate it anyways <laughs> it was a blue raspberry jello filled with blackberries and strawberries and i think blueberries like i said a really great idea but next time it has to stay in the fridge for probably 24 hours and also 
you have to add less water to the jello for it to be like a jello jiggler otherwise it's like that scoopable jello that you can eat from a bowl but you want it like really um what's the word not gelatiny but you know more solid than it is the way it was right now it was much much too liquidy so we'll try it again another time but i gave them some tips and tricks on how to make it work out better so anyways right now i'm just cleaning up the kitchen wiping down the counters uh, the kitchen is not in a too rough shape so it's just some regular maintenance here going to switch over the dishes make sure that the counters are all cleaned up too Okay, guys, so I didn't realize, but I had another little update he here for you guys on my uh, sourdough starter. So we are doing another feeding. At this point, we're doing every 24 hours because that's what it says. And then as the starter starts to mature, I think it's like day five and six, you do it every 12 hours. So right now it's been about 24 hours and I had this like liquidy stuff forming in the middle. I looked it up online and it said it was totally normal and it actually enhances the flavor of the sourdough. So you just like stir it in there, but some of them said to pour it off. Anyways, I'm still kind of like adjusting things and um, trying different things to make my sourdough starter a lot better and it is starting to come along now. So it does say don't give up on your starter and I didn't, I kept going. So you have to watch in my upcoming videos for more updates. All right guys, so yesterday's filming got cut a little bit short because Miss Charlotte here wasn't feeling too good. She's been throwing up for about four days and we have a vet appointment in about 50 minutes. So I'm gonna have to um, change my morning around <laughs> and get her to the vet so they can check her out. I think she's got some tummy issues going on. I did put her food in our bedroom here. She did eat this morning at about 4.45 a.m., almost a full bowl. So I'm hoping she keeps it down, but we still wanna get her checked out to make sure she's all right. But she's acting a little bit funny. She doesn't usually sit on this mat. Right here is kind of her favorite spot or at the end of my bed here. Lots of times you guys will see her in my videos hanging out on the bed, but you can see she's going for her spot right now. So anyways, I'll make sure I keep you guys updated on her. Hopefully she does okay. She likes to do that on the comfy blankies. But um, yeah, anyways, I will continue on with the rest of my cleaning. Bedroom is still pretty clean. You guys saw in the last couple of videos. I made a lot of progress. Um, we had a little bit of laundry to put away. Um, these are actually <clears throat> the um, shower fixtures for my master shower that hasn't been done yet. So we started cleaning out in the bathroom. The bathroom kind of looks a little bit cray cray right now. Um, we put those lights up, but we still have to finish the master shower. So that's what that is for. And then I just have a couple of the blankets I need to put away that we vacuum packed yesterday and then some of Jeff's clean laundry. Got to make the bed, put a little bit of this laundry away and that's it. Otherwise I have other cleaning to do um, later when we get back from the vet. Okay guys, so this will be the end of this video. I do have some more footage that I'm going to start plugging in to my next video. But at the time that I'm doing this voiceover, this is a few days after Charlotte has seen the vet. It turns out she is perfectly fine now. She did end up having a reaction to a new package of food that I got for her. She does not like that kind of food apparently. It's not okay for her tummy. So we definitely got rid of that and she's doing much better. But she went through probably about six or seven days of vomiting. So, so happy Charlotte is feeling better. But that is it for today's video, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please make sure you subscribe, hit that little notification bell so you guys don't miss any of my future videos. And I'll see you guys next time in the next video. Bye.